What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Magic Life with DJ Augustine, episode two. Yep, we are sitting in a beautiful hotel room in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. So I hope you like our couch here. <laughs> so our guest today, Aaron Gordon, why'd you decide to have him on the show today? Uh, I love AG, man. Um, you know, he has a, a lot of um, experience in his league. Uh, he's done a lot of things at such a young age, where it's the dunk contest, uh, he's been in movies. You know, I just thought he was a very interesting guy to have on, and he's a great friend of mine, and, and um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we got into a lot of stuff today. I yeah, think it was, sure. it, was, it was a good one, good. so <laughs> make sure you keep watching. Augustine for three. He thrills it! DJ <laughs> Augustine! So, Dallas, Texas, second game of a back-to-back. How are you guys feeling? I mean, it's a little different. Uh, we just was, was talking about it, you know, um, being on our first back-to-back -back on the road is different from being back-to-back -back at home, you know. So uh, it's a little different. It's harder to get to sleep and, and you know, being in your comfort zone. But, um, you know, we got to fight through it and get ready for a game tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same for me too, you know. It's the same for both of us. Um, but I don't know if it's, like, the same for you. When I was younger, back-to-backs were like the worst. They were like so hard. But like now, it's kind of like I feel like I'm in a, almost a rhythm mm -hmm. in that second game. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we were just here on the court playing. Yeah, it's, so a, it's the same for you, kind of. Well, I'm gonna tell you why being on the road back-to-back -back is different for me. I get to sleep a little bit better because I have three kids. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. At home, it doesn't matter. You they know, they, you up. they're up at six o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. ready to go. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I can see where that that's a little bit different for you. That's fair. Yeah, I remember last year you said that it was the Lakers Knicks back to back, and you were talking about how the second game was easier, and I was like, what is he talking about? The second game being easier because naturally you just think that you'd be more exhausted from it. Yeah, uh, you you would think that, right? Well, I guess um, it's just kind of like a rhythm thing. Like we just got done playing the game, and we right back to playing the game. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like uh, we we got that. I don't yeah. know that feel for it. I don't know. I know last year we had a couple games where we we actually played better in the back to back than we did the game, the the second game. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. of the back to back, we played better in that game than we did on the first game. I don't know why. Just like Ag said, maybe just that rhythm uh, from coming off playing. Um, you know, and the other team is sitting there waiting for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a better rhythm because we just played. So I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll see how it works out yeah, this we'll season. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, compare. We'll, hope, we'll do a yeah, compare yeah. and contrast. For sure. For sure. But yeah. AG, you're our guest. So let's talk a little bit about it's you, good. shall we? Uh, all right, let's do it, man. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, AG, I know um, you have a brother, you have a sister, and y'all very athletic. You know, um, how was that growing up, you know, with two other siblings that was really athletic, probably very competitive? How was the household? Uh, yeah, it was real competitive. Like, we were competing for everything, like food, you know what I mean? Like, if you didn't get to the table in time, it was like, man, I didn't even get to eat. <laughs> so, like, it was competitive at all times, man. Um, like, just playing. Uh, my brother was really good at basketball growing up, so was my sister. So um, I would hear their, their names ringing throughout the Bay Area. And, you know, that, that put, like, um, like, an expectation, like, kind of, like, a little bit of pressure like, I was like, man, I'm going to just be in my brother and sister's shadow uh, growing up the whole time. So it was like, for me, I just wanted to break out of that because yeah. uh, they did a great job pushing me. You know? So you're the youngest? You're the mm -hmm. youngest? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You're the baby. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. did, you, did you get special treatment at home? Did, how did that work? Man. Being a baby. Because I was the baby of my family. So Okay. So yeah. you know. I know how it is. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, how, do you, how many siblings do you have? I have two older sisters. Okay, yeah. so you, so you was the baby boy. I got away oh, with a lot. Man, yeah. you couldn't do nothing. Yeah, I wrong. got away with a lot. <laughs> you couldn't do nothing on the baby boy. I got with, got away with a lot. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I think I mean you have kids of your own um, now, but I think when, that first kid, you know, you're like really like stressed, and you really want to make sure you do do it the right way. Mm -hmm. By your third kid, you're like, oh man, this. So you a pro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. You drop the cookie on the floor, you gotta pick it up. Eat it. So, Eat it. That's yeah. it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, for None sure. To it. Yeah. Yeah. So well, um, you know, we're gonna take you back uh a few years, you know, that, that slam dunk contest. How how did that change not only your career but like your life? Like being on that stage and uh being in that competition and the world seeing it, seeing your abilities as far as dunking. Mm. And well, that that was just like it was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that was like one of the most fun moments I've had being in the NBA. You remember like growing up, we had the like the dunk hoops, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. The seven foot five dunk right. hoops. 
and we would have dunk contests back then. And then now I got big enough to do it on a ten foot hoop. So yeah. you know, I got to just basically put we got to put on that dunk show um, in Toronto, and, and it was it was fun just because, um, you know, it was just something I love to do. Yeah. I guess that was, that was like the best part about it. I love dunking, so I got to do it for the world to see. Yeah. I got to be myself in front of everybody. Uh, everybody responded well, and now like everywhere I go, people know who I am. Yeah. So that was. Uh, so that was like a dream come true for you. To, oh yeah, to, to be on. You know, obviously being in the NBA is a dream come true, but mm -hmm. being on that stage, doing like you said, being a dunk contest is like a dream come true, right? For sure, man. Yeah. Dude, well, growing up watching the NBA dunk contest was it was so amazing. Yeah. So to like be in that situation, I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm here. You know what I mean? I arrived. Uh, but at the same time, like I don't I don't want that to make my career. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't want that to be um, the only thing that people remember me for. Mm -hmm. You know. So how 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 much does that drive you to work on other aspects of your game so that people don't just think, oh, he's just a dunker. Um, but you could do so much more on the court. Like what does that what does that do for your drive? A ton, man. Yeah. A ton. You know, I don't wanna just be labeled as just a dunker. Like obviously it's nice to uh get some dunks mm. and like dunk on people or alley oops. Like when we get alley oops it gets the crowd rocking. So like there's good things about that. But at the same time, like I just want to be a complete basketball player, and I'm still figuring it out. Right. Yeah. I don't think people realize how that you know they see guys like Ag, they they think he's just a dunker or he can dunk. But how often do you get a dunk in a game? Like it's it's not Man. it's not really often like mm. that you get a dunk you know in a game. Right. Yeah. Maybe once a game. Once. Yeah. Maybe once a game. Yeah. So it's like, uh, however many points I'm scoring, I'm only dunking one time. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is the dunk contest something you would do again? Man, I would love to do it, but the way my body set up right now, we, we gonna see, we gonna see. Come February, I'm sore, man. I'm really, really sore. Come February, but um, in my mind, I want to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. With my body. <laughs> Tell me something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How much practice are you putting into that? Like getting ready for the dunk contest, aside from practicing. Regular, you're like getting ready for your like during your regular season. Uh, I probably practice for like two weeks before. Okay. You know, probably practice for about two weeks, um, because like I went out there in New Orleans, it looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that looks stupid, and I don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, you want to go out there and you want to uh, represent um, really well for you know your team and your family. Um, Friends, you know what I mean. So you want want to make sure you go out there. It's a, it's like an art to it, you know. I don't really like the people that just walk out there like, well, I'm athletic, so I, I go out there and do it, and then they end up looking stupid. You know what I mean? yeah. So, so sure. you know what I mean. Yeah. You want you want people to put yeah, put some into put it. some into yeah, it, yeah, right? For sure. Well, I think that makes it more fun for the fans too mm. that are watching. Yeah. If you're like actually putting more thought behind it. Mm. Yeah, what yeah. You're doing. I, mean, I think I, think I so mean too. I watched the dunk contest. Um, it was a stretch where I didn't watch it though, because it's just like like Ag said, like it looked like guys was just going out there just trying to freestyle. Mm. But now it looks like guys are like putting more thought into like the actual dunks, and like they're entertaining the crowd and the fans too. Like some people walk out in certain outfits, and uh, like Blake did the car, he jumped over the car. Like those mm. kind of props and stuff, like make it exciting to watch. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I really think it's like a new wave of, of dunkers. Like the kids in high school. Sick, right? Yeah. Some of the kids are doing crazy. like really crazy things. So like with, when DJ is talking about like not watching the dunk contest for a while, like that's valid. I didn't either. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like yeah. people are doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, like freestyling. And I think um I uh myself alongside with Zach and um well everybody else in that dunk contest, I think it kind of like broke through that threshold. So now it kind of like it like reintroduced like some of the different things that people can do dunking on basketball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like people seeing that, like jumping over, putting under both legs. Now they're like, oh, there's a, there's a lot more you can do than just like the 360, uh, right. like the reverse or through the legs or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I know you had mentioned that you don't see dunks happen a lot during our games, but is that something you guys practice or just mess around with after practice? 
at all. I'm just trying to see DJ Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, only, he's only waiting for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he, those days are, I don't think those days ever happened in the game, but uh, I can dunk. I used to dunk before in, uh, in high school, you know, when I was a lot younger. Um, but nah, not in the game. It's over. It's Young over legs. That. It's over for that. Springy legs in high school. Yeah, it's over for that. <laughs> But yeah, it, I mean, it's not something that I don't think guys practice. It's just it, it's just an opportunity in the game that happens where you might get a fast break or a steal or maybe an alley oop or something like that. But it, I don't think dunking is something you can practice. Like it's not like a play. Mm -hmm. It's like something that has to happen in the game. You know. So. I was just saying like messing around at all like after practice. Some guy, I mean, we do sometimes. It yeah. Depends, it depends on how practice went. Yeah. That, I usually just see you guys playing like around the world. Yeah. After. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because that's a chance for us to work on our shots and stuff like yeah. that, you know, get a rhythm. But uh, the dunking stuff after practice, it, it depends on how practice went, you know, so. Right. Because, I, mean, I mean, it takes a lot of energy to dunk, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Like, after practice, you might as well just spot up and shoot spot these threes. <laughs> that's energy. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Save it. Yeah, so, I mean, AG, we know you uh, We you did a movie, Uncle Drew. Mm. Uh, you played a main character, Casper. How was that experience like? First of all, how did that opportunity come to you? Like, what what did you do, or did somebody reach out to you and say, "Hey, you want to be in a movie?" Yeah, originally they were gonna go with somebody. I don't know exactly who it was, um, but it fell through mm -hmm. with them. So, um, my agent called me, and said, "You want to be in a movie?" I was in L.A. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, really? like, why, why would I not want to be in a movie?" <laughs> like, of course. And uh, so I flew out to Atlanta um, that day from L.A. to Atlanta overnight. Just bam, red eye. They gave me the script on the plane. I was like, oh, man, I don't know if I'm about to read through this whole movie script right now. So um, I got on, on set. And I was a little nervous, you yeah. know what I mean? I didn't really know what to expect. I never seen the ins and outs of, um, I don't know, the, the the movie world, you know what I mean, the movie industry. So um, I, I was kind of just trying to play close to the vest, you know, yeah. for, for as much as I could. Uh, it was really cool seeing Kyrie and, and Chris Webber, Shaq, Nate Robb, uh, Lisa Leslie, Reggie Miller, seeing all the old, uh, or seeing all the uh, legends, you know what I mean? Right. And then seeing some of the uh, really good actors now, like <clears throat> like Lil Rel and Nick Kroll and Tiffany had this, uh do their thing. So um, to me, it was, it was uh, an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to do more movies and shoot movies and do TV shows and, and commercials and all that. Like, yeah. It's it's fun, bro. It's yeah. like a lot of fun. That's something I was gonna ask you. Like, since doing that, like, does that open your eyes and make you want to do more, or is it something like ah, I'm gonna just stick to just basketball? Like, no, it's, it's definitely something that I want to do more. Yeah. You know, it's just um, it's it's like it's just fun, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like playing around. It's kind of like portraying um, like a human character, like a humanistic character and traits, um, different situations, scenarios. Um, that are imagined, like, it's like the imagination coming to life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But um, at the same time, it takes a lot of work, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a lot of work. I know Kyrie was on set for a long time, two mm -hmm. months, three months, Yeah, whatever. I, I was there, I was only there for a couple of scenes, but I was there for um, probably about three weeks, like, solid, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, and the, the days are long, like, in the day scenes, you get there, like, 9 a.m., you don't finish till about. 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and then on the night scenes, you get there at 7 p.m., you don't finish till like 4 a.m. a.m. Right. in the morning. Right. And you're just waiting around in the trailer. So it's, it's like a lot of work. So um, Was it like in the summertime did y'all shoot the movie, like in the mm -hmm. summer? So how was that with your training, like getting ready for the season but then trying to shoot a movie for three weeks? Like how did you right. implement your training within that time period? Right. So um, thank God it was a basketball movie, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. like I was on the court, yeah. you know what I mean, still just kind of like, Working a little bit, and then I, I would either get them in um, in the morning, my workouts in the morning, and then go to the set, or at night and go to the set. Um, and then, I, cause I knew I was, I didn't want to. Like basketball is our bread and butter, bro. Right. Like the better we do on the court, the more opportunities come exactly. off the court. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, um, knew I couldn't let that slip at all. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. What was the hardest part for you with acting? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty talkative, and like. I don't know, like I'm just kind of like a kind of like interesting dude, like where I'm just first I interject all the time, 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm talkative. So if you two are having a conversation, I'd be like, okay, yeah, and what, what about this? And they'd be like, dang, bro, can I, can I talk? Like, yeah. So that, that, that was one of the hard parts. I realized, like, that's not real life. You can't just interject in people's conversations. So the scene would be going on. And I'd be like, yeah, but what about... And they're like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. That, <laughs> let's stick to the script, man. Let's stick to the script. I was yeah. like, I don't really know the script, but all right, let's keep it rolling. And then uh, another... Um, um, like tendency I know that I do is like I like I laugh in like inappropriate situations. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd be like <laughs> you'd be like, I don't know, like something like, oh my cat fell out of a tree. I'd be like, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? like yeah. and it's like that's not really And you're able to see that by watching the the playback and stuff like that. You're able yeah. to see you know, see yourself on screen. Yeah. 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 See see like the bloopers or just see yeah. going through the whole thing. Like it's like well, that was serious. Why'd you just laugh? I was yeah. like, oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> that's a really yeah. interesting like experience, like for to be in that situation, and that's when you come to like learn all those things about yourself. Yeah, mm, for yeah, sure. for real. Yeah, for I, real. I actually I did the broadcasting uh, program mm -hmm. this summer, and uh, that's one thing like watching the playbacks and seeing like how many times I say um or. You might use a you know you might mm -hmm. say oh, things yeah. that you don't realize you saying often or a lot, and you get to see it. Or just your posture, just everything. You get to see that by watching playbacks and seeing yourself on TV. Yeah, it's and transition thing. words. Yeah. Like there's certain words that people always start off yeah. with just because it's like natural or comfortable. Right. Or you learn that you start to say a lot of yeah, the same things sure. repetitively just to have like a buffer. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the worst. It is. I know. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It just take practice, yeah, I guess. Practice. You know yeah, what I mean? over a lot time, of practice. Yeah, over time, you get better at it. That's anything you do, so. Yeah. But um, we also know that you um, you have a couple of programs and, and things you're doing, like the coding. Like, could you explain to us, like, what, what's all into that? Because, like, actually, my daughter, she just started doing coding in school, and now that's all she wants to do at home. I don't really know what it's about, but uh, I don't know <laughs> right, okay. if you could kind of explain. Like, Okay. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Coding, coding is, like, the future of technology. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, I mean... Like encourage your daughter to keep doing that, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that's something like it, the better she gets at coding, like she'll be set up for life, mm -hmm. man. People need coders and will forever need coders. All the apps on your phone, um, all the all the different phones, like T V, like like basically anything that's technology, mm -hmm. some type of coding went into it. Right. And um yeah, the program is it, just to show uh underprivileged kids that you know, you don't have to turn to the streets, mm -hmm. and you don't have to. You don't have to make it to the NBA. You don't have to rap or be in the entertainment business. Like, there's other career paths that can have you live a lavish lifestyle. Right. You know, the the ones that they see on TV, and then uh, create generational wealth. You know, because like, man, uh, creator of Facebook, you know, creator of Amazon. Mm -hmm. These are all like apps essentially right. you know what i mean websites mm -hmm. so if your daughter would be the one to create the next instagram man man that's crazy DJs you would be living good yeah, you'd be <laughs> living good boy when i get home i'm about to get all the apps for coding <laughs> i'm telling you yeah. i'm telling you yeah. it's, some, it's something that is uh it's it's um it's just it's a it's a future bro it's yeah. just a future so um and it's only going only going up man people always need coders right is there anything other than like coding, any other business stuff you're into that you're like kind of getting into now, like kind of preparing yourself for, I know you're still young, you have a long career ahead of you, but like after basketball, things you're interested in or like if it's real estate or uh, there's a lot of businesses and things out here that you can get involved in. Yeah. Um, I just like to have fun, man. Mm -hmm. I really like to have fun. So whether that be like through making music or making mo movies, or that coding. Um, I, I'm also like a big believer in mental health. Mm. So I have a, a mental health program called Train the Mind. Mm. And it, it's just uh, trying to separate uh, the person and the player. You know, because so many times I, I would come home after the games and I, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Mm. And it's still to this yeah, day, you know what I mean? I wouldn't yeah. be able to sleep. Yeah. Like, just being like thinking about a play I could have done better, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like a turnover or not not running back on defense or not giving it everything I have and yeah. I would that would keep me up at night. Right. And that don't help nothing. Nah. You know what I mean? Like nah. you need to sleep. So Yeah. 
um, the, just like training and, and trying to alleviate some of that anxiety for uh, the youth so they can, so their games can shine, yeah. so, their, so their personas can shine, so they can be better people and in turn be better uh, players uh, in whatever sport they choose to be doing. Yeah, I mean, that's big. Like for me, like exactly what AG said, like there's so many games in my career that I felt like, damn, I could have played better or I could have, I should have made that shot or if I'd have did this different or didn't turn the ball over, like, and that'll linger on. Like, it'll really affect the way I feel the next day. Mm. Um, and I don't think the fans, they understand that and they see that, they think, oh, these guys make all this money, they don't care, they lost, or they don't care, they they made a bad play. But, you know, us, the players, like, it could linger. Like, so for me, I think my kids and my family, my wife and my kids, they really help me with that. Because when I come home from a game, my kids run up to me like, I don't even think about the game anymore. Oh, that's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think about what just happened, how much we lost by, if I played good or played bad. doesn't matter because they're like, daddy, 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 you know? So that takes a lot of that away from me. But that's big because I don't think the fans and a lot of people on the outside understand, like, that kind of stuff, like, it affects me the next day, like, the way I feel the next morning, like, if I have a good game, I feel I feel great. I'm listening mm. to music on the way to the game. <laughs> yeah, you know good. what I'm saying? Like, if I have a bad game, I'm listening to motivational speakers and all kind yeah. of stuff, you know, so it's just, yeah. that's big that you're doing that, man, you know, and, you know, that the people can understand, like, that we really are human and right. we feel these ways, you know, it's not about money and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's interesting you say that because I know sometimes, like, for you guys, you guys are always like, there's another game, turn mm -hmm. around, there's another game, and it's so easy to say that, mm -hmm. but it's one way to feel that way. Mm -hmm. So what are maybe, I know you mentioned your kids, that mm -hmm. helps you kind of get your mind off things, what are other ways you guys maybe help relieve that anxiety that you guys can sometimes get? Um, I don't know, maybe AG could tell you for him, but like for me, um, I don't know, just maybe go and get some shots up or something like that, maybe, like see, you know, just to see a couple shots go in. If you having a slump, we all go through slumps. That's gonna, it's, it's an 82 game season, nobody's gonna make every shot. So um, just to see a couple shots go in, it might help you feel better and play better the next game, just to see that. Um, you know, and uh, I don't know, AJ, I mean, what you think? Man, well, if you're shooting 50% from two and 40% from three, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's half the shots you're missing. Mm -hmm. More in, mm -hmm. from the three, that's more than half the shots you're you're going to miss. And that's, like, you got to be able to get through that. Um, I, I have to meditate. Like, I have to meditate or else I just be thinking about, Dumb stuff, mm -hmm. you know. I was like compulsive thinking, like overthinking, mm -hmm. thinking about the wrong things, about whatever, you know what I mean. Um, like trying letting fans get to me and stuff like that, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Going going on IG, seeing what people are saying on yeah, IG. You can't you can't let that because uh, that's can't. that's the biggest thing too. Like nowadays, like when I was younger, we didn't have Instagram and all that stuff. So if you have a bad game, oh, okay. You, you might feel it, but unless you're going to like the newspaper, or, like actually yeah, seeking yeah, it out, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. in or your face. Somebody write a report about you in the news or something like that. But nowadays, you have a bad game. As soon as you get on IG, it's you know people saying negative things, you know, and that's just that's just the way it is, the way the world is now. So you can't let that affect you. You gotta you know believe in yourself and and you know just care about what you can do and and how you can get better. Um, you know, and you can't just, like AG said, sometimes it makes you overthink. And when you out there playing, if you're overthinking or thinking too much, you're not going to play good. No, not it at doesn't all. matter. You got to be out there just free, playing, using your instincts. And that's when people play their best. Um, if you're out there thinking and thinking about what people going to think or what they're going to say, it could really affect your game. Um, but that's just the world we live in today. You know, you, you can't let it affect you. You got to find some type of mental strength where you can just get through it and care about what you what you you know what you could do. Do you guys find yourselves ever like after games That's real. when you have your phones in the locker rooms, are you looking at your phones or are you just like trying to almost avoid it? If like let's say you do have a bad game, mm -hmm. are you almost just trying to avoid it as long as possible because you're just like I just don't want to see what anyone has to say. I just think by nature, if you have a good game, obviously you're gonna get on the phone oh, and see yeah. it. Yeah, that's just the human nature. <laughs> you're like, ooh, and if man, you have that's a like bad good game, today, you're like, oh, they gonna kill me tonight. <laughs> so so uh I think that's just human nature. But um, I've never been like a real big phone guy, so um, I mean, must be nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, you know, these guys are social media. That's what they they grew up into. That I didn't, so um, you know, I can go days without checking Instagram or being on the phone. Uh, my main people who I care about, who who I care, their opinion, 
they can text me or call me directly or I'll see them in person, you know. Anybody else, it doesn't, they don't affect me personally. So how you feel about that? I mean, like you said, like we grew up with Instagram, so I like going on Instagram, checking the Instagram after the game. But, you know, it, it's like uh, fans are crazy. Mm -hmm. Fans are <laughs> crazy. They they really are very invested into us, which is yeah. a good thing mm -hmm. and a bad thing. But they're living and dying on how we're playing, you know what I mean? Like it seems like everything's right in the world when we play good and everything is all out of whack when we're playing bad, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just something to kind of – see and kind of just kind of laugh at you know what i mean they be so invested you know? yeah at the end of the day this is our job you know obviously we all grew up wanting to be in the nba uh we're one of 450 in the world um and like i said it's our job you know uh to the fans you know they they look at it like it's uh if you're not playing well uh, you just you suck and da -da -da. But like we don't come to your job and you know <laughs> sitting there behind sit, your computer, like, why'd yeah. you do that? You know, right. people make mistakes, you're not perfect. And this is a basketball game. Like all kind of things can go wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And I think all of us work extremely hard to be where we are today and and, and we all go out there trying to win every night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it don't happen. But uh we definitely have some diehard fans in Orlando that we love and yeah. we're just happy to bring that excitement back to the city. And I know things are gonna turn around for us right now. We kinda, you know, I wouldn't say struggling. It's still really early, you know. So um, things are going to turn around. We did it last year, um, and, and we're going to do it this year. And uh, we just appreciate their support. I was saying that last year. I was like, if any, or last night, actually. I was like, if anyone remembers, last season didn't mm -hmm. start off right. all that great either. And then right. you guys just hit your stride and mm -hmm. yeah. made the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you said, I mean, you know, the NBA, the how it works, you, can, you have a game. You got to move on. It's, it's, we had a game last night. We lost. We can't think about that game anymore. We play the Mavericks tonight. Mm -hmm. You got to move on. So uh, you always have an opportunity to get better and make things better. And uh, that's that's the good thing about the NBA. I think the last thing we wanted to talk about, which I always find this fascinating, <laughs> is tattoos. Okay. Just because people can have, like, you never see, like, you have tattoos, you have mm -hmm. tattoos. You right. guys don't have the same thing, and they all tell different stories. Right. Mm. So I want to know, first off, let's do a number count. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know how many you guys have? Shoot, I lost track after about twenty. <laughs> That's, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I lost track. I probably got about ten. Yeah, I lost track after about twenty. Um, yeah, you TJ, DJ, you're tatted. Yeah, I'm tatted. <laughs> I'm tatted, <laughs> but you won't know if I if I have on you know regular clothes. Yeah, like know. you can't. Yeah, but um, I just think uh, it's a way to express yourself. Um, for me, all my tattoos mean something. I don't have any tattoo that doesn't mean something to my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and um, like I said, it's just a way to express yourself. I, I think it, it, it looks amazing when you get it done by the right person. Um, and uh, I know one thing, the older you get, the more it hurts. <laughs> you yeah. know? Really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm at that stage where I'm like, it's over for me because... They hurt bad now. Well, is me. it also depending? A lot of it depends on where you're getting it too. I don't know. I don't know about that. It's one. the more, like what? the more you get them, like the There's first no one. Way. Somebody trying to trick you into getting a tattoo because it doesn't matter Done. the location. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. The first one is like, oh, it didn't even hurt. Like it was like I was just being scratched. Yeah, when you're younger, you could take it like on my first tattoo. There's no way. It, yeah. it gets it, it's painful. It's painful. So. Um, yeah, all my tattoos mean something to me, like my kids, my family, things I, I, I'm about, you know, in my personal life. They all mean something to me. Um, and I lost track after 20, so. How old were you when you got your first one? My first tattoo, I was uh, 17. I was a senior in high school. I was a senior in high school. Youngin. Yeah. You yeah. feeling good? You like, yeah. <laughs> boy. Well, I'm inked yeah, up. Yeah, I'm inked up. I got it on my back, my back tattoo. What was it? Um, my grandparents, they gave me my uh, my first basketball at the age of four. So I got, uh, they passed away. So I, I have uh, angel wings with a basketball and like some hands. And it says, thank you for the rock mm. with their names. That was my first tattoo. I like it. Yeah. yeah so, cool. yeah. Yeah. What about for you, E.G.? Um, my first tattoo, uh, I'll tell you my favorite tattoo. Okay. Favorite tattoo. is It's on my side. Um, so it's a, it's a skeleton. Um, but it's a, a Native American like chief, like the headdress, um, because my family we're a lineage of Osage uh, Native American, Osage Indian, and um, he also has the uh, a bandana on on his <laughs> like right here. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, tough. Yeah, and um, man, I I just think uh, 
I think it gets deep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it gets deep. I think uh, um, Native Americans were pushed out uh, in this land. You know, a lot of uh, blood was spilt on the soil. Uh, and I know that came from my ancestors, but at the same time, uh, I'm a white man as well. You know what I mean? As much as I am. So, you know, it's an interesting dynamic. You know, it's kind of, to me, it's like that Native American cowboy, you know, a kind of mixed into one. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I'm guessing you guys, do you have any more room on your body since you said you have over 20 tattoos? I do, tattoos? I do. I know a lot of the guys, like, I know the younger generation, they're starting to get tattoos on their legs. Yeah. yeah I, I, got, I got a couple. Yeah, got a but these, these were just, I, like, yeah. for play, though, which is crazy. Yeah. You know, I, like, I can't do the leg. I just can't do it. I, I just, I don't know. I'm more up top, you know. I'm not going to say I'm done, but I'm getting there. Because it's getting painful, too it's, painful. It's too painful. For me. <laughs> it takes a lot of thought for me to get a tattoo now. Yeah. He gonna do his legs? No, guarantee no legs. He do his legs. Yes. Do you guys have you guys ever just done like spur of the moment tattoo where you're just like, Meh. um, the AG's you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not me. I, I I think about mine for a couple a couple of weeks. Then if I I'll bring it to my wife. Then she'd be like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, check so, in. yeah. So, but it, you know, most of the time I think mine's out. You know, yeah, check in. Uh, when I went back to California, we were all sitting around bored. That's, 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 that's the worst <laughs> that's part. Of, that's starts. the worst part about it. It was yeah. bored. Like, let's go get tattoos. Like, all right, I just got Cali tatted on my leg right here. Okay. It hurt, bro. It was like heavy hand, like yeah. deep needle, one line. Like, was oh, it man. shading or was it just? Mm, it's the outline, one line. The shading hurt too. No, the shading. Shading is the worst. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. It's all the worst. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all not fun. <laughs> Well, we want to appreciate you, bro. Thank you for coming hey, on. Thank you, bro. Thanks for appreciate having me, Appreciate you coming, man. bro. We really appreciate it. Anytime. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, AG. All right. Thanks, sir. Augustine for three. He thrills it. <laughs> DJ Augustine.